response video to Big Lundy guy, whatever the hell his name is. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm using a waterproof camera. We'll see how the sound is. Not sure of it. Uh, it's a good little camera. It's fun. Anyway, um, uh, yeah, so your video. Oh, jeez, irritating. Um, yeah, you got that passive regressive things going. Look, the only reason why I responded to your video was because of your comments on the Thunderfoot Magic Sandwich Show video. All right, where you said something like it's uh, anti-natalism is a joke or some kind of bold statement like that. Didn't back it up with anything. You know, you make a, a quick argument. If you can call a philosophy or a statement a joke, then you really should have a quick explanation of why it's a joke. And your quick explanation is a convoluted, philosophical, tangential pile of mush. That's all it is. Oh, well, under normative ethics, when I shove them up my ass and rub them under my nose, uh, I perceive that there's a lack of duplicity weight on the objective, um, subjective tangent on the XYZ uh, diagram of the curve of uh, declination. I mean, it's a big pile of philosophical bibble fucking goddamn babble. And so if you're going to make a bold accusation, an aggressive statement, then you ought to be able to back it up in a couple of sentences. You didn't do any of that shit. You just trash talked on a video full of fucking trash talk, and now you make a response video pretending you're some kind of polite, decent human being. No, you're a trash talking troll on the fucking internet. You want to call yourself something else? You're lying. All right? You just junk climbed in, chimed in with a bunch of morons, knee jerky reactionaries saying something completely stupid. And that's all you did. All right? You didn't challenge the argument at all. And your response video challenged nothing. You said nothing. You didn't even apparently get the obvious. So now you want to have some kind of Skype conversation. For what purpose? Uh, so, so you can so, so, I, so I can just give you a platform uh, to babble a more convoluted philosophical jibber jabber from a bunch of jackasses who know nothings. Well, fuck that. And my point wasn't that I don't know what your normative categories are and all your other crap. I don't give a fuck, okay? Those premises are false premises. The only premise of philosophy is, guess what? It's logic. You make an argument, and if somebody makes a better argument, you lose. Okay, something's true, perhaps, if there's no possible alternative explanation. Then that's what's called reason to believe. All right, and the strength of the belief is going to be based on how much evidence you have of something. Okay, and whether there is any possible alternative explanation. I can say evolution's a fact because every piece of evidence points to it. Every piece. And the alternative explanation is preposterous nonsense that has no evidence. So, <laughs> so yeah, it's uh, beyond reasonable doubt that this evolved, in my opinion. No reasonable person can deny evolution. Only an unreasonable idiot can do it. That's my opinion. And that's a premise of every argument I'm going to make in my life. All right, that's the premise. If you don't agree with the premise, then we're done conversing. Because it's a fundamental premise. It's a premise that infects every single value judgment, every single statement I make in my life is in some way going to be connected to that truth. So if we don't accept the truth, we're done conversing. I think you're an idiot. Fuck you is going to be my reaction. We have nothing to say to each other. That's the argument that has to take place. We can't talk about economics. We can't talk about any other fucking thing in the world until we resolve that truth. Because the non-existence of a god is a big deal. The fact that evolution is unintelligent bullshit is a big deal. And those uh, premises are the only premises that need to be clarified for there to be any conversation. It's the context. It's the game. It's the... You know, there's no point in talking about how to play the game if you're talking about chess and I'm talking about risk. Right? There's no point because there's not enough similarity between the games. None of our conversation will make any sense because the pieces are different, the game is different, the purpose is different, the function is different. Um, that's logic. And that's philosophy. So you can shove your normative crap up your ass, you can shove your, your ancient dead philosophers up your ass. I'm sick of all of them. All right, every fucking one of them, Kant, uh, every fucking one of them can go to fucking hell if they're not already there. Let them go there uh, because they contrived a big pile of crap and called it philosophy. Philosophy is about describing reality. That's all it is. 
You either describe it accurately or you describe it inaccurately. Period. Not complicated. Um, so fuck you and your babble. About your normative ethics and your existential ethics and your old blood. Fuck, fuck all your crappy fucking jargon. Fuck it. I have no use for it. I will not play in your sandbox of bullshit. Uh, anyway. So enough of that. Uh, as to hedonism, you basically pointed out the very flaw in the definition. The definition is that pleasure is good. I quite obviously don't think pleasure has any ability to compensate for suffering. Pleasure is a manifestation of satisfying a desire. You already use it up by getting it. It satisfies a deprivation. It corrects for a negative state of being. All right, you have to be dis you have to be uncomfortable before you can become comfortable. That's the way it fucking works. You wouldn't know what comfort is if they didn't put you in the fucking dungeon of uncomfortable first. So it's used up. It doesn't have any ability to bandage another wound somewhere else to make it better. If you mix comfort and discomfort together, uh, it comes out brown. It comes out discomfort. If you mix comfort and uh, substantial suffering together, it comes out substantial suffering. You can't fix it. It has no value. It's a fucking zero. That's why it's called a zero-sum game. Because there's nothing that you can ever do to undo the suffering. I mean, literally, hundreds of millions of people died of smallpox. Uh, horrible death. Slow, agonizing, probably one of the worst deaths you can die of. Uh, so, you know, horrible, horrible, horrible. You can't undo that shithead. That's a reality. It's a fact. It's in the fucking book. And I'm saying there's not one goddamn thing you can do in your goddamn life. There's not one goddamn little silly joy you can fucking goddamn have that's going to compensate for that suffering. Nothing. It's impossible. So anyway, that's why hedonism doesn't work. Okay, because hedonists believe pleasure has value. I believe suffering has negative value. And that's another one you nitpicked in this silly jargon you play with. When somebody says value, if, if somebody has a negative number, you don't say the negative number has no value. No, you say it has a negative value. You understand its, its relationship on an XY axis, and uh, you don't say it, declare it non-value. You don't call it zero because it's a negative number. No, you, you concede it has negative value. It has value. It has weight in the negative direction. All right? So, again, fuck you and your nitpicking bullshit. Uh, why, like I said, why would I want to have a Skype conversation with a nitpicker, uh, a trash talker, a rude, obnoxious asshole, a uh, passive regressive uh, shithead? I mean, yes, you have nice titties, but that's about all I see about you that's at least a bit charming. Um... I mean, Jesus, fuck you, I mean, really, uh, you're just playing a game here, ooh, uh, yeah, I'm talking with him in the ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> you know, whatever you're doing, but it's bullshit, you're an offensive, rude fucker, I've been offended, I find you obnoxious and irritating, all right, fuck you, all right, now let's get to the argument, your non-argument, now I asked you with a question about rape, do you think I asked you for no fucking reason? You sloughed right over it, ran right the fuck over it, like it was a nothing question. No, it was a something question. You should have been able to figure out the consequences of the question. All right? So, and you basically answered the question exactly as I predicted a rational person would, which is, yes, okay, a woman who believes rape is bad has a right to veto uh, the legalization of rape. Even if all the other women said rape is okay... Even though I say no, I don't really mean it. Um, the one woman who says, I fucking mean it, has a right to end the game. To say, we will not play the rape game because there's a chance some woman will mean it when she says no. And so we're not going to let you do it. Because her rights trump your pleasure. Her basic rights to be left the fuck alone trump your pleasure. Your deluded notions that you're going to give her a good time. She has a right to be free, to be liberated from your pretentious, obnoxious aggression that thinks you're going to give her a good time. She has a right to say, no thank you, fuckwit. 
I'd like to be spared being your fucking child, and that's the analogy I'm making. All right? That the people who inevitably will be born, we know it statistically, it happens every fucking day, they will commit suicide, we know they will be born into horrible circumstances, and we know the number is high. Hundreds of millions of people, all right, are not pleased with their existence, would not, would like to undo their existence. That's a, a fact. And you're just saying to those victims, fuck you. You're just saying, that asshole has a delusion of accomplishment, they think they're going to give you a gift, and they have a right to shove the gift in your face, down your throat, and into your belly. That's all you're saying. So you explain to me the conflict. This is, this is, this is the, the function of logic, shithead, is when you have contrary statements. So you can't one moment say, women have a right to veto rape. One woman. One single woman on planet Earth has a right to veto rape. And then the next minute say, hundreds of millions of suffering humans and presumably billions of suffering animals uh, and the voices and the people who would advocate in their defense have no right to veto your silly game playing, your silly notion of purpose. Not your life, not your happiness, not your ability to have a life. We're not taking your life away. We're taking away your right to rape, your right to invest their welfare in a future they didn't ask for. That's the question. Now, if you want to clone your motherfucking ass and psychologically control that clone so it's just like you, just as dumb as you, just, just as retardedly conditioned as you, just as much of a sheeple asshole as you, then fine, torture yourself for eternity. But leave me out of your game. I don't want to play your fucking game. Leave me the fuck out of your game. So here's some more thought experiments uh, for you to answer. Uh, all right, Frankenstein Castle on a hill. Uh, produces monsters. Now, nine of the monsters turn out white and polite, pretty, little pink dresses, and they go skipping out the front door going, I love hopscotch, I love candy, blah, blah, blah. I like to watch sunsets and wet my panties. All right? And one pops out the back door, uh, scarred, miserable, suffering, uh, just in complete angst and discomfort, horror, pain, uh, debilitated, uh, just really awful. Now the ones that roll down the back of the hill collect down there in the ditch and they have a problem, right? Uh, now they can kill themselves individually and then their individual pain, but does that stop the monsters rolling down the hill? Does that stop the problem? Is that a solution to their dilemma? No. Their only solution is to fix the experiment or to stop the experiment, correct? Now, a fix seems quite impossible, realistically. I don't think there's any realistic prospect of a fix for this problem. You're not going to be able to fix nature. You're not going to be able to give morphine to all the insects that will be eaten today. You're not going to fix it. So, the point is, it's time to stop it. You don't have a right to make those monsters. You don't have a right to impose that suffering for nothing. There's no emergency here. This is accomplishing nothing. This isn't to save a life. All right, we're not talking about raping women to save women. We're not talking about running a kid over driving 200 miles an hour to get to, you know, a 9-11 building so you can save 100 people. No, we're talking about uh, an act of just perception, just I think it's okay. That's not a good enough uh, reason. You got to do better than I think it's okay. I think it balances out. I think the suffering of the victims justifies the skippy little twatty girl uh, uh, la laing at the front door. Um, so that's the bullshit. So deal with that one. What do the monsters do? What's the rational, uh, uh, non-joke answer for the monsters? What, what's their non-joke solution, fucker? Um, and so answer that question, shithead. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so let's see, what other thought experiment can I throw at you? Um, I know there's another good one. And it's not coming to me yet at the moment. Uh, well, we'll wait for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but they're out there. Um, and just has to do with this idea of, uh, 
what, what is accomplished. Again, what are you balancing this against? People just have a notion in their head that this is a thing to do. It hasn't been proven beyond a reasonable doubt that this is a good experiment. And wouldn't that be the sensible expectation? I mean, if this was an experiment I was doing in a laboratory, the expectation the government would impose is that I have some sort of plan, that I have mitigated against disaster, I've bought a proper amount of insurance, there's a low likelihood of real harm. All these things would have to be elements of my choice. Now, where is evidence of any of that in the average human's procreation? Where's the evidence of any of that thoughtfulness? There's none. Where's the evidence of that statement explaining what exactly they're going to accomplish except for satisfying their own selfish desires? There's absolutely none. There is, will be none. Because you will not find anywhere in this universe, you will find no need except the needs we create. Our existence creates the problem in need of a resolution. Without us, there is no problem. Just like without the Martians, there's no problem. There's no Venetian problem. There's no Plutonian problem. There's no Saturn problem. Uh, there's no Uranus problem. Well, Uranus, maybe. Uh, there's no problems. And on any of these other planets aren't creating any problems. This planet has a problem. And why? Because sentience is on it. That's the problem. So anyway. So whatever. Yeah, you want to be uh, have a nice, calm conversation, that's okay. But if you're going to be insulting, fuck you. All right? I never went to your house and insulted you. You came to my house and insulted me first, fucker. You say shit on a public forum and expect me to say what to you? Huh? No, I'm going to say fuck you. That's what I'm going to say to you. And again, I don't even mind a bold statement. You're going to call something a joke? That's okay with me. Call religion a joke because you can prove it. What you can't prove is that antinatalism is a joke. What you can't do is prove that uh, Benatar is an idiot or a moron or unrealistic or foolish. And until you do that, shithead, fuck you. Thoroughly. Your rhetoric is way over your fucking head, way over your capacity. You're promising what you can't deliver. And it's really fucking irritating. Back it up or shut up. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck you. Seems the only appropriate response. Really. <laughs>